In this video, Vader searches for the prism, which I'm sure most of you don't have an idea of what it is. The answer may surprise you and it could even lead into parts about Episode 8 and Snoke and all the other theories that might stem from this. And as the story commences, I'll explain at the end of the video. So let's pick up exactly where we left off in yesterday's video and if you haven't seen it, you might be confused because this is part 2. As Vader and Tome walk into the abandoned Jedi Temple on Coruscant, Tome recognizes just how quiet and eerie it is. As the scene switches to where Sidious is being held with Tracta as his guard, the medical droid next to him, which if you recall, is the same droid that overlooked Vader's operation in Revenge of the Sith, begins to beep uncontrollably as if programmed, which is exactly what was happening. Gentis had ordered his engineers to hack into all droids within 5 kilometers of the area to kill all Imperial officers. While Vader and Tome continue through the temple, we now see them in the Archive Sector. As Vader senses danger, he ignites his lightsaber and the droids begin their attack, as Tracta just narrowly dodges a critical strike in the next scene. Tome warns Vader, shouting that the Jedi have come to fight, looking behind him as two hooded figures ignite their green lightsabers. As they fight back to back, Vader reassures him that they are just training droids. It seems during Order 66 the clones didn't destroy all the droids in the temple. As Vader destroys the Jedi training droids, Tracta gets the upper hand on his fight as well. In the following scenes, Vader just goes berserk and sends a force shockwave through the air, propelling objects with the force at his enemies. As the fights end in both parts of the city, Vader and Tom come before a weathered and broken looking door. As they enter, Vader commands that he must never tell anyone what he sees this night. Once inside, activating the security tapes, Vader demands to see Anakin's conference with the Jedi Masters during Council. As we see Anakin in the center of the room, he tells them how he's captured countless of Dooku's men, from officers to force wielders. Obi-Wan interrupts to ask him if he's requesting for another promotion. As Anakin refuses these claims, he simply asks the Council why all the men he's captured and defeated end up disappearing once he hands them over. Raising his voice, Anakin demands to know the truth telling them he needs to know what happened to his prisoners of war. As Master Windu answers, he basically tells Anakin that he's making things up and that he's overstepped his authority. Telling them that it's not fair, Obi-Wan interrupts, explaining to Anakin that he's touched a nerve and to move on. Threatening the council that he'll go to Palpatine and ask what really is going on, he storms out, leaving the masters to discuss amongst each other. As Mace Windu tells them to let him go to Palpatine, that this is the one secret that not even Palpatine knew. Heck, the Senators and the rest of the galaxy didn't know. Which is why Obi-Wan asks them what will happen when they all find out that the Jedi Order has been running a secret prison for years. As Master Windu tells him that basically the Jedi have to take matters into their own hands and imprison all the evil dark side users and assassins away from society. Yoda says that war changed the Jedi to do these things, essentially saying drastic times call for drastic measures, and that when the war finally ends, they'll bring all the criminals to trial in court. As Obi-Wan tells the council he wants to go see this prison in person, Yoda agrees it would be good to visit Jedi Master Skyne, who guards it, as Mace then tells him the coordinates. It's in the mass shadow of the sixth moon of Diab, right on the fringe galaxy. Advising Obi-Wan not to take Skywalker, which is when Vader steps in and completely rages, telling them they plotted against the dark side from the very start. As he causes a massive storm from within the room, his rage contained in a spherical storm bubble. Which I have to cut in and say that Vader could perform Force Lightning, and in fact it was the most dangerous of them all. I'll make a separate video on this for tomorrow or this weekend if you like. It's pretty different from normal lightning since he had prosthetic hands. As Vader begins to settle his anger, he tells Tom to remember what he heard here today, that the Jedi always believed in shades of grey. Now this is probably the most important part of this video, which I think Disney is anchoring onto very hard. This is one of the first signs of acknowledgement from Vader that the Jedi dealt in shades of grey, that they were flawed. And I think this is something that Luke means in Episode 8, when he says the Jedi must end. As they pack their things and board the ship, Vader sets the coordinates for the Fringe Galaxy, to the sixth moon of Diab. Do you think Vader or Anakin always knew the Jedi were flawed? How they showed shades of grey? 
Do you think these prisoners will show up in the movies? Or the prison itself will come to life in episode 8 or 9? It's a pretty cool concept and allows for so many new characters to pop up all of a sudden without it being confusing or unbelievable. They can just say, oh well, they were locked up in a prison that the Jedi put them in for the last 30 years. The third part to this five-issued comic is the climax. It's where Vader goes and fights all the old prisoners of war that Anakin had defeated, and then had locked up by the council far, far away. If you want to see part three, let me know by writing in the comments or hitting like, and I'll bring that to life for you guys as best as I can. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all in tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Now, fulfill your destiny.